I can see that a you know, line integral of a vector field, because vector field is generalization of a scalar field. Think about it. So vector field contains multiple scalar fields as component. And if a vector field has just one component, that's a scalar field actually. <laughs> okay. So so, when, so so your definition of a scalar field, okay, um, definition of um, integrating the vector field is basically, you know, in some sense, generalization of uh, definition of scalar field and line integral of a scalar field actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you this. <laughs> and, 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 and the second thing is, second thing is, imagine you have two curves but they are concatenated curves and you want to compute the integral of a scalar field over this concatenated curve. Then it should be same as, as per expectation, the sum of the scalar fields, okay. you know, the, the integral of the scalar fields over the both curves. Okay. The reverse curve to show. Reverse curve. Okay. So C bar is denoting the reverse curve. So this is this is the reverse curve. Second part is an exercise we have to do for ourselves. Um, why the first part should be true? What would be the meaning of this precisely? So here's the thing, just a hint actually, you can do it for yourself. C bar F. So what is the parameterization of C bar? P bar. It's not, it's, it would be P bar, but P bar is a P of minus T. That's what it is. So if, if I want to write it in the terms of the integral, this would be F of P of minus T multiplied by dot product with the tangent vector of uh, P of minus T multiplied by norm of P prime of minus T okay, and DT and integral would be from where to where? B to A? Minus B2 minus A. And now, in order to convert it to the other kind of a curve, what you need to do? Minus <laughs> <laughs> So just make a substitution, say, say t, so minus t equal t, say replace it. And see what happens. Everything will stay same except so it's, it's limits for working. Would that be here to be? Would you like to say, okay, minus b, say minus a. You can think about it, then you can have a to b actually. So it should be minus b to minus a because if you have um, a minus a is a minus b. So b is a minus b is a minus a. Mm -hmm. So a is a b, if, if, so b is bigger and a is smaller, the minus b is going to be smaller and it's going to be minus a. Anyway, so, so be careful about the limits. So you have some hint here. Okay. So you can treat this as a hint. Here. Okay. Just play around with the definitions here. So this second second. Second. So you're gonna have what? So you, 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 you need to know what? So, so, you, so you have a formula for the parameterization of P1 and you have to break down into the two intervals 
So A1 to yeah, A to B1 and then B1 to B and then apply the definition accordingly. In the second integral you need to make substitution because you know in the argument of P you have this T minus B1 minus B2 so you have to you have to adjust it actually. You have to adjust it. Yeah. Just apply definition. First step is apply definition blindly. Okay. Try to get it. Give it a go. Take it. Give it a go. Let me write now. When you're going to see all classical books, like this is a bit modern notation, okay? When you're going to see the classical notation of line integrals, especially for the vector field, you will find none of this stuff actually. You will find a very different kind of a story. So let me also tell you the classical way of writing, for example, you know, line integrals, especially for the scale of field, vector fields. Okay? Um, so that you should also know this. What other has been okay? We haven't done it. <laughs> So here's the thing, and it's very natural actually. So I'm interested in computing the integral of this. So this is what is my um, is what. Okay. Sense what we say. I mean, if you want to, if you want to write, so by writing this in the classical sense, I mean writing the integral in the rectangular coordinate set. Okay. So in the rectangular coordinates. So what would be rectangular coordinates? Is x, y, z, x1, x2. These are the rectangular coordinates. Actually. While the form that we have learned, it's a parametric form of the. Like to write it in the rectangular coordinates. Okay. So, what could be the P of T in the rectangular coordinates? How does it going to look like? So, it's going to be x1 of T, x2 of T, and so on and so forth, xn of T. Yes. So, in classical sense, if it's not the P of T that is symbol U, then you're going to often see R, the position vector. Okay, you're gonna see the position vector. Okay, so instead of saying, you know, for example, so and, and, and you will see this. So position vector is x1, x2, and so on, and xn. So this is the you know position vector that shows that reflects the position of a particle in the space and so you also learn the, to write the position vector in 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 three dimensions. What's position vector in three dimensions? In two dimensions it's x, y. And in three dimensions, x, y, z. Okay, that, that reflects the position of something actually in this space. Okay, so it's really in classical sense you're gonna you're gonna see this. Okay. What would be f of p of t? So I know that it's not going to be f of p of t now. So you're gonna see something like f of r. Okay, and by f of r I mean f of x1, x2, and Xn. And I know f is a map that sends values from Rn to Rn actually. So the output of this is going to contain n scalar fields actually. Okay? So n scalar value function. So f1 and f2 and fn where each of this fi is a function of x1, x2 and Excellent. Okay. So each of this function is f1, f1, f2, f1. Now let's think of that function. Okay. So we have this notation, and what I would like to do, I would like to write. 
I know about this that this is going to be a to t f of p of t dot product with the p prime of t divided by the magnitude of p prime of t multiplied by okay the magnitude of p prime of t and dt okay so that's an scalar so if I wish I can combine these okay and I'm gonna have a to t f of p of t and uh, p prime of t and dt right by the way you can also use this formula directly for computation of the scale of uh, uh, you know what you call so vector field actually so you don't have to compute the magnitudes I mean if you wish just compute f of p of t and prime of t multiply them and integrate yes, so there is no need to you know get it to the you know this extra layer of complication so computationally this would be there so if I convert it into the rectangular coordinates okay how does it going to look like or uh, maybe in terms of this is going to be f of P of T is like your R, okay. P prime of T is like your DR Over DT. by DT okay. and you have this DT. So informally, if you just get rid of DT, informally, I'm saying informally, okay. and then, then F of R dot, this is going to be DR and R is the position vector that is pointing towards the points on the curve actually. If you wish, you can. I mean, if there is no dt, so there is no right, no need to write a to b. So you can write c. Actually. So you are doing this integration over the curve. Okay. And now f has how many components? So f1, f2, fn. And dr is going to be like dx1, dx2, dxn. So you can write this as okay, and that this is f1 dx1 plus f2, dx2 plus so on and so forth, and fn, dxn, and integrate this over the cn. Okay. So this is this last expression is really the classical way to write the line in diagonal and that kind of coordinates. Okay. Let's look at one example. So imagine you have been set to compute this in okay. So y z dx minus x z dy plus x minus y dz and integrate this guy along the curve so the first curve that has been given to me is this I'll just do the one so, so the curve is this <coughs> whose parameterization is this so x of t is cos t y of t is sin t and say z of t is z okay so you have two ways to tackle this problem I mean one thing is combine these three components and make a scalar field okay like f of p of t right and combine this key x y and z and that is your p of t and do the way you did previously okay. so so when you are doing this you are basically integrating this scalar field what y z uh, minus x z and x minus that's what we are integrating and the curve is what so the p of t for you is combine x y z so it's cos t sin t and zero so we know if we have been given this information how to integrate it. Uh, how can we combine the whole thing? Uh, so combine the integration integration. Okay, combine the curve. I mean if you if you if you compare it with this Okay. If you compare it with this, this is your first component of the vector field, this is second component and this is the last component. 
Right? So you can do it. Right? Okay, you see this and do the classic, you know, the, the new way actually. But I mean, if you wish, you can also do it directly. By the way, for the T, I know that it should be integrated to one. So how can I do it directly? You know, just substitute every single value here. For example, you want, so you need to substitute a dx of t. So what would be dx actually? So it's going to be minus sine t dt. So what would be dy? So it's going to be cos t dt, right? And dz is zero. Okay? And substitute xyz in the terms of the c. Okay? So yz will become what? So this is going to be 0 d, dx, okay, maybe this would be the first term would be 0, I don't need to write it, minus xz would be 0, and x minus y d, dc would be 0, so I will take a 0 from here. Okay, okay. Like this was kind of an unfortunate example in which everything becomes 0, but otherwise, I mean, if imagine that you don't have a z here, but you have an x, y here, for example. Then you're going to do what? You're going to cos t sin t multiplied by dx is sin t dt. So in other words, this entire integral will convert into the Riemann integral. Simple Riemann integral by substituting the values. Take it? Take it? So the classically, you know, you know, the line integrals are presented in such a way. So the z equal x change the x there is another curve given in the exam, you know. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's put, but, but it's still, uh, ah, okay, so the last part would survive. I mean, if you take this as z and this as x of t, so this would be dz of t and uh, dx of t is going to be 0. So you will see still there will be a bit trouble. Okay? In the first term you have dx, so that's 0. Minus in the second term you have 0. Plus, or the last term survives actually. So what is x? 0 minus y and sine t. Okay? And dz. So dz is minus sine t dt. So the entire thing is converted in the terms of the t, so why not to put the limit on the t? Just compute this integral. And that's it. So we compute the integral. Okay? There are plenty of exercises in which we have been set to compute you know, the integrals in this manner as well. Okay. Even sometimes in such integrals, you know, to solve the such integrals is that imagine, so, so you also try to, not only, you know, sometimes, okay, so if x and y and z are given in the terms of the t, you will try to convert everything in the terms of the z. Sometimes it happens that there is a relationship given between y and x actually. So imagine y is a function of x. So y is for example x square and z is say, you know, some function of x. And if y is depending on x and z is depending on x, you can convert this entire expression in the terms of the x actually. And just integrate it with the limits on the x. So sometimes this also happens that, okay, you don't have been given a parameterization, but you have kind of a relationship is given between all Anyway, so it's just clever way to
Now, we're going to talk about special kind of vector fields. We do have vector fields, but there are some special kind of vector fields for which solving an integral is even simpler. It's even more simple. Okay. And if you have a general vector, any vector field, this integrated this manner. But there are some special kind of vector fields for which you can have even more simpler versions of, you know, more simpler tricks of computing the integrals actually. Okay. So first such field is, I'm defining the gradient field. Okay. The gradient field. So what do you mean by the gradient field? A vector field a vector field is is called gradient field. Partial phi by partial x one. Yes, 